Thanks for staying with us. Now, we've been talking about the economy and, the, and some of the decisions made by the CBN, uh, and that's the MPC, Monetary Policy Committee, in the course of the week. Uh, we're speaking with a professor of finance and capital market um, at the Nasarawa State University, um, Ucho Waliki. Now, we're going to turn to another conversation, uh, because during the FEC meeting this week, um, the announcement was made that the president has given the go-ahead for the implementation of the Oron Sayi report. Um, we will just get now this brought about the the question that what is the fuss about this report that seems to generate um, reactions from different quarters now what that means is that uh, a number of agencies commissions and some departments have actually been scrapped some have been merged, while others have been subsumed. National Agency for Control of AIDS, HIV AIDS, NACA to be merged with the Center for Disease Control in the Federal Ministry of Health. National Emergency Management Agency to be merged with the National Commission for Refugee Migration and Internally Displaced Persons. Now just for quick context, um, in 2011, the administration of President Goodluck Jonathan set up the Presidential Committee on the Rationalization and Restructuring of um, the Federal Parastatals, Commissions and Agencies. The committee was headed by a retired federal civil servant and former head of service of the Federation, Stephen Orosai. The committee recommended scrapping and merging of 220 out of the then 541 statutory and non-statutory agencies. The 800-page report of the committee noted that the functions of most government parastatals and agencies are overlapping. The implementation involves merging, subsuming, and scrapping agencies with similar functions. Um, the president has also constituted a committee that will work within a 12-week period to actualize this new directive. And still with me on the show um, is Professor of Finance and Capital Market at the Nasarawa State University, Ucho Waliki. Um, he joins us from Abuja studio. Prof, again, this, has, this is generating um, reactions. I want to also get your thoughts on that as well and how this will address the loopholes and shortages that we've been talking about. Well, uh, it's um, understandable that it's generating reaction. The RSN report is generating um, mixed um, um, reactions. Um, as you rightly noted, this is something that um, has been on the shelf for a long time. Um, I recall, just as you noted, 2011, 2012, uh, the report was um, submitted. I think um, the white paper didn't come out until 2014. And another white paper, too, was uh, submitted under the last, um, you know, the immediate past regime uh, in 2022. Okay. And uh, for me, I think the, the decision to implement that Orosanya report now is a welcome development. Um, at, le at least it speaks to uh, the fact that um, now there is a political will you know, to implement it, um, you know, setting up um, an eight-member committee, giving them 12 weeks to work. The advice I have with respect to the time frame is that it is rather short. Uh, 12 weeks is rather short to, uh, you know, look into that document and um, uh, with a view to I implementing it. Uh, maybe uh, not, not um, less than one year you know, uh, should be given to, the, uh, to that committee to work on that report. And that's because, again, that report has taken time. Um, uh, you know, a lot of things have, have you know, happened since then, which is also why you had some people saying it should be jettisioned, that it has been overtaken by events, you know, time and so on. But I don't think it should be, uh, we, should, we should jettison it. And that's because of the need to reduce the cost of governance, you know, um, in Nigeria. Um, when the president was um, constituting his cabinet, I, I thought, you know, having as many as 48 ministers, you know, um, uh, you know, was rather unwieldy, you know, 
um, and it was going to have an effect, you know, an impact on the cost of governance. Yes, the constitution says every state must have a minister. Okay, so I, I was thinking maybe we could restrict it to just you know 30, 30, 37 ministers, you know, ma maximum, um, and that also means that. Um, if we are reducing the number of ministries, uh, some ministers may not really, um, you know, have full, manful ministries. But the important thing is to reduce, when you reduce the number of ministries, you're also reducing cost of governance, you know, in the process. So the Orasanya reports, um, you know, the decision to even implement, as I said, is a good one. It shows that the government, um, uh, you know, has demo is demonstrating political will, you know, to do something that previous regimes you know, uh, you know, couldn't do. But again, in doing that, it's important to understand that in the white paper that was released in 2014, the Orasana report identified 541 uh, agencies, parastatals, um, um, and commissions, you know, at the time. But if, if as, we, as we speak today, we now have over 900 of them, okay? So you can see that's um, one of the things that, that are, uh, you know, why I said that there is a need for a committee to take time to actually review. So there may be need to also review. That and that's my, 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 my you know, question, Prof, um, is that even as we're trying to address, or the government is trying to address this, um, what is to say that more agencies will not be created? Because it would seem as though every time there is a challenge in the country, we either set up a committee or we create an agency to handle it. As we speak, the, the National Assembly is looking to create um, development commissions for some, some uh, regions in the country. That's also going to be um, tied into the cost of governance. So how do we ensure that more agencies are not created even as we're looking to uh, deal with this, you know, or merge agencies? Yes, but, but <clears throat> the, the important thing is, uh, you know, um, what is the rationale for the merger or the scrapping of some of these agencies? It is because of the discovery that a, a number of them, you know, had overlapping functions. A number of them were simply doing the same thing. Okay, it, it, it will be difficult to say you are shutting the door on the um, establishment of um, agencies. Um, if there is need to create an agency that will be doing something that you know hasn't been there before, of course that provides um, you know rationale. But the case of a Russian report was a case where you have agencies that were doing similar things, overlapping functions. Okay, and that was why that um, uh, you know uh, those recommendations were made. But again. I was going to say that even if you decide to implement that Sorosanya paper, the, the white paper that was submitted in 2014, okay, it may not really have significant impact because over 70% of the recommendations by Orosanya were rejected. I have looked at that white paper. That white paper contains 270 items. Out of the 270 items, virtually just a few of them were accepted by the government. Okay, most of them were either rejected or the government simply said noted. Okay. So that's why I said that there, there may be a need to also go to review. And the White Paper 2 also made some recommendations that, uh, of course, have been overtaken by events now. For example, if you look at the White Paper, it, 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 it talked about uh, the Abuja Securities and Commodities uh, uh, Exchange. Today, we don't have anything called Abuja Commodities and Securities Exchange. So uh, we have you know, the Nigerian uh, Commodities Exchange, you know, which replaced, replaced that. So that's the need for... That also means that there is a need for this committee to sit down and review the white paper with a view to um, also, uh, you know, uh, considering some of the ones that were rejected, you know, to see whether they, st they still have merits and the ones that the government noted. All right. The, for example, there was a recommendation to merge WAEC and with um, NECO, but the government rejected it. There was a recommendation to establish. Um, the national the um, national commission for tertiary institutions so match national university commission match um, the mbt match them with um, the national commission for colleges of education but well, again government rejected so government rejected a number of recommendations including matching efcc with the uh, icpc and the uh, code of conduct tribunal it was recommended but government also rejected so um, as i said Majority of the items there were rejected in the white paper, and that's why there's need for the committee to also take a look at them, to see, to take a look at that document again to see the ones um, 
that they can further recommend to the government for uh, implementation. The way it is, the white paper, the way it is, uh, just contains a few um, that were accepted, and even if you implement that, it may not really translate into something significant. And part of why I talked about having more time is also for the committee to also recommend what will happen to those that will eventually be disengaged, you know, uh, as a result of the major, as a result of the, you know, scrapping, uh, so that it doesn't result to, um, you know, create unemployment uh, crisis. Those people must be accommodated one way or the other, not necessarily in the civil service, but something has to be done, you know, to ensure that even when they leave, they are, um, you know, productively engaged, um, you know, in the economy. But how, how some have talked about severance package, and you know, others say, look, that is also going to be money gulping for the federal government. In what, in what way can they be actively engaged uh, without so much pressure on, on the finances of the government? Yes, I've, I've, I've had um, um, a recommendation. I think one of the government officials was saying that um, assuring that you know, people wouldn't, wouldn't lose their jobs, uh, even with the um, implementation of the Orosanya report. Um, so what that would mean is that if you imagine everybody still stays, um, you know, within the system. <clears throat> so, but if that happens, then the, the whole idea behind the um, behind the reports and the, its implementation, you know, becomes defeated. What is the idea? The idea is to reduce the cost of governance, to reduce recurrent expenditure, to reduce personnel costs, to reduce overhead costs. Okay, um, because um, the, when you duplicate functions, that is the kind of thing you get. So, so what do you do to, uh, to ensure that uh, even when people leave, as I said, they, they don't just you don't throw them into the, into the labor market. It's to have a plan. As I said, you have, um, you have a one-year plan, and within that one-year plan, part of your plan will be first to communicate the need. There must be serious communication. Okay, let them understand why the government is doing what it is doing, why the agencies must be matched. Okay, and then the people that are there, those that will eventually, um, you know, uh, not be absorbed, will be uh, trained. There should be a kind of training between now and the time At the least to, process to, is completed to, to for those people. Efficiency. Mm. Uh, Prof, I'm afraid we do yes, have there to want leave some sort of training that will enable them to also survive outside the civil service when they, when they, when they leave. Absolutely. And possibly, of course, possible. arrange yeah. for some sort of package you know, for, for those people as they leave so that they can also use to start you know, something on their own. Thank you, Prof, for your time. Um, very interesting contribution from you today. We'll be speaking with a uh, professor of uh, capital market, uh, finance and capital market at the Nasarawa State University, um, Uchi Waliki. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.